If you're wondering about the best options for installing NZXT's RGB core fans with the single frame variants, the F360, F280 and F240 fans, I'm here to show you how to do that. Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn teaching you how to wire and set up these fans in an NZXT case or in another build. And I'm going to show you the wiring and logic setup as well as the fan orientation and things to bear in mind there. I'm also going to show you how to wire them directly to the motherboard or with various different fan controller options so you can control them with your motherboard software or with NZXT's cam software if that's your preference. Now this is for the F360 versions but the logic will be the same across the other variants of these fans as well. These are single frame fans which are designed to make the installation process really straightforward and indeed it is because once you get the fan out of the box you'll see it has a single cable coming out of the end so rather than multiple cables you've got a much easier solution in theory. In the future, there will be a dedicated controller for these fans, but for now, the thing to bear in mind is that you'll need the adapter cable that's included with the fans as well, and that will make life fairly straightforward for connecting it to your system. So you have this flat connector on one end of the fan, and then the adapter that's included, which splits the connection into multiple different ports. So you'll see this adapter cable here, you just plug that into the fan cable and then it has the system fan connection for fan power and either 5 volt RGB connection or NZXT RGB. You'll see these labeled clearly here. Also, I'm making it obvious for you and I'll talk you through these different things. Which of these cables you use will depend on your preference, um, your plans and what software you want to use or how you want to connect them to your system. But the idea here is to make it really straightforward so that you can easily connect them directly to your motherboard. So the 5 volt RGB connection, for example, go to the three pin addressable RGB header and then the other connection goes to your system fan header or your chassis fan header. So that's how you'd connect one single 360 frame fan. You could connect that directly to your motherboard. Now in theory, on other motherboards, you might find that you can easily plug in multiple other groups of these fans as well. So we could have another frame fan here, and you can see that I have two more RGB headers on this motherboard. So it's easy to plug in a couple more of these quite easily onto this motherboard and plug them all in. This might not always be the case. Your motherboard, you might find you don't have that many, but you should be able to, in theory, at least plug in the RGB and fan power for these. And you should find multiple chassis fan headers spread out around your motherboard, top, bottom, sometimes on the side. You can see I've got a couple at the top here. I've got a couple at the bottom. They're accessible in various different ways. And then the two five volt, RGB headers on the right hand side as well so in theory you can plug those in. Now if you don't have multiple RGB headers an alternative is to use NZXT's RGB controller which is a separate purchase and I'll link to all these things down below in the description so you can find them easily but this thing requires SATA power from your power supply unit so I'm going to quickly show you that with an example from the NZXT C1500 watt platinum. So this is a modular power supply unit, but the logic will apply across other PSUs as well. So you're looking for the SATA cable and you'll need to plug that into the peripheral and SATA port. But essentially this will power the controller and it's important that you make sure this is plugged in. So this is the same cable that you'd use for SSDs and hard disk drives. And it's usually daisy chainable, so you'll find multiple different connections on the same cable. You plug one end into your power supply unit with the peripheral and SATA ports clearly marked on there. And again, this will be the same across a lot of different power supplies, so it's fairly straightforward to do as long as you have the relevant cable. And then you plug the other end into the controller. I'm showing you these things all outside the case and outside the build, so it's really easy to see how the wiring works, just make it a bit clear. But obviously, you'd actually do this when it's all fully installed in there. But you do need to make sure it has power so that it can control the RGB lighting. Then you take the NZXT RGB cable from the single frame fans, and instead of using the 5 volt one, you use that, and you plug that into the RGB controller. Now, obviously, we've got three 360 mil frame fans here, so we could plug those all in. And then you take the other connection, which is the USB connection, and plug that into your motherboard. 
This then allows you to control the RGB lighting from NZXT's CAM software, which I'll show you later on. And by the way, it will default to white when you first turn it on, so it's worth bearing that in mind. Don't panic, but it will be set to white as standard. Because these fans use the 5 volt RGB connection, an alternative is to use something like this thermal right RGB controller, which as you can see has multiple ports on it for RGB connections. So not just fans, but if you had LED strips, for example, it then has a RGB connector on the end and you'd then connect that directly to your motherboard. So this allows you to connect up multiple frame fans really easily to your system if you don't have loads of RGB headers on your motherboard. So it will just turn those all into one single connection, which you can then plug into your motherboard. This means that you can control the NZXT fans with your motherboard software, if that's your preference, over using CAM, for example. And it's a fairly affordable purchase and one that's able to control loads and loads of fans. Now, it does only do the RGB lighting, though. So you can then control the massive 360 mil fans quite easily but NZXT's other fans as I'll show you won't connect to it it's worth bearing that in mind another alternative is to buy the thermal right fan hub which does both RGB with that three pin five volt RGB connection and the system fan header and chassis fan header alternative power as well so you can plug both of the connections for the cables from the fans into this and then this has two connections that run to your motherboard this allows you to put this at the back of the case, keep cables nice and tidy, but also to connect loads of fans to a single controller. It's also powered, it requires SATA power, and I've done a separate guide on how to use this and got into a bit more depth on it that I'll link to in the description. But this is another alternative if you prefer motherboard control over NZXT's software. However, if you want to use F120 core fans, a single fan to go with it, then you really need to get either the RGB controller or this separate RGB and fan controller from NZXT. And this will make life a little bit easier. It has three fan power ports on it and six RGB ports. So this means you can plug in a lot more RGB fans to it. Now, this is the current version of the controller. There is a new one coming, which will be new and improved, but I don't have that to be able to show you what that's like. But again, this loses the same logic. It needs SATA power and a USB connection. The difference here is you can plug both the chassis fan power cable into this and the NZXT RGB connection into this as well for each of those single frame fans and any additional F120 or RGB core or RGB duo fans into it from NZXT. You can connect those up and then you can control the whole thing via cam software. It is limited to just three fan power, which is worth bearing in mind, but you can obviously plug in your fans and then control the lighting fairly easily with the software and have control over the speed as well. Now, in terms of orientation, it's worth bearing in mind if you can see the back of the frames, as you can here, this is set to intake. So this is pulling air from below the case and putting it into the case to keep it cooler. Alternatively, if you can see the front of the fans, that means that's exhaust. So if the front of the fans is facing down into the case, as I'm doing on this radiator, that would be pulling air through up out of the radiator and exhausting it out of the top of the case. Now in this moment, you can see me trying to work out which way to put the fans in terms of the wiring, because obviously the wire only comes out of one end. So you need to account for this and it's worth bearing that in mind. You can see me putting these fans on the NZXT Kraken Z73 here, directing that cable towards the rear, and then I'm looking where I'm going to top mount the radiator. And then you can end up with some fans there. So you can see that I've put one of those single frame fans onto this radiator. So you can do that. But also the side mounted fans and the ones on the bottom at intake, the single fan at the back and the fans on the radiator are set to exhaust. And that will then keep the CPU and GPU fairly cool. In my experience, this is a reasonable setup. Alternative, you might want to do it the other way around, depending on where you're mounting your radiator. So you can see me here setting the fans to intake instead. So this is designed to pull cold air through the radiator. And this is if you're front mounting. So in this instance, on the H7 Flow RGB, 
I'm actually front mounting the radiator and doing a push-pull setup with three fans on the front of it and three fans on the rear. So if you can see the back of the fan, that's where air is being pulled from. So just bear that in mind in terms of the airflow. However, the good news is, as you can see, you can indeed use these single frame fans on your cooler. So if you'd like to swap out the standard fans that come with the cooler and replace it with the single frame fans, then you can do that. And you just use the standard radiator screws that are included with the cooler as well. But you only need four of them, which makes life easier. Now, if you've got a Kraken cooler, you plug the fan power cable into the breakout cable, and then you can take the NZXT RGB connection from that and plug it into the RGB breakout cable from the pump head as well. So those two connections come from the pump, and that way the fan power and RGB is controlled by the pump. That's connected directly to your motherboard with USB and to your power supply unit, and then that keeps it powered nicely. Alternatively, you could plug the fan power into the CPU fan header on your motherboard, and that would then ensure that the fans are spinning up to match the CPU temperature. And that will work for other all-in-one coolers as well. Once you've put all the things into your system, so you can see me side mounting those intake fans in this Corsair case, for example, you need to then obviously plug everything in. Don't forget the SATA power for any RGB controllers you're using and your Kraken cooler if you're going to be using one of those. And the USB connections are really important from them as well if you want to control things with the CAM software. But hopefully this has given you some helpful insight into the wiring logic and things that you can do in this setup. Now I want to quickly show you what to do if you're using the motherboard connection. So directly to the motherboard without any RGB controllers of any sort because you want to control fan speed and RGB via software. The first thing I'd recommend is going into your BIOS and finding the fan tuning settings. You'll want to go in there and find the relevant ports that you've connected it to and then you want to make sure that you set the fans to PWM mode. PWM settings in here, as you can see on this chassis fan header, will ensure that the fans are controllable in terms of speed, which is important, because when you get into Windows, you might be adjusting that in your motherboard software. Alternatively, you could use something like Fan Control, which is a free download that you can get really easily, and this can then monitor your fan speeds and allow you to create fan curves and adjust it. Once you download this software and run it, it has a special setup which basically detects what fan headers you're using and then runs tests on them to see what speeds they can get up to and adjusts accordingly. And you can then tweak the speeds manually or you can apply fan curves to them. This is really useful because what you might find if you're not using an NZXT controller, for example, is that the fans spin too fast when you first use them, especially if you haven't set it to PWM mode and they're set to DC mode in the BIOS, or you haven't run this controller and tested and tweaked the fan speed. Now you could use your motherboard software as an alternative, depending on what motherboard you've got. They usually have fan tuning software in there, but fan controls are a fairly lightweight system that a lot of people rate, and it's a free download that you can grab pretty easily as well. In that software, you can then, once it's run, see that you can adjust things manually or you can turn it on and then use a curve. At the bottom, you'll find a little plus button and then you can choose between a bunch of different fan curves. There's one automatic one, linear, mix and flat curves. So you can pick which one of those you want to test, see which one works best for you, tweak and play around with them. You can choose what they base the temperature on which can be handy. So you could set one, for example, based on the fans that are on your radiator or near to it to adjust based on the CPU package temperature. So obviously to spin up a bit faster when your CPU is getting hot and then have another separate fan curve, which is specifically for your GPU. So maybe the fans on the bottom of the case that are set to intake and you could set those to adjust according to the GPU temperatures and then you just go up to each of the fan groups, assuming you know which one's which, and select the relevant fan curve. And then that will then apply that and go through it. Now you can change those, pick a different fan curve, put it onto a separate group. You can basically apply it to whatever port you've plugged the fans into. So as long as you remember which one's which. Or you can just adjust the speeds manually and see how they react 
and work it out that way. But you can then tweak the minimum speed as well and the maximum speed. So if you find it's too loud, you can set it at the maximum speed a bit lower and just tweak and play around and see what works with your system in your case. Alternatively, if you use an NZXT controller, you should find the RGB core fans up here in NZXT's cam software, and you can adjust the lighting from in there and then the cooling from the cooling section in that and adjust between various different profiles, including silent and performance modes. And then you should just be able to tweak all the fan RGB lighting really easily and adjust across all the fans you've got installed in your system, especially if you're using the full RGB and fan controller. And then you end up with a really nice looking system that hopefully runs quiet and well. Hopefully you found this video useful and giving you some good insights to all the different options you have with these fans and how to set them up. And subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to check the links in the description for the useful things I've recommended here. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.